this would take us actually to to, to the Ravel concerto, also using a lot of exotic instruments um, that Ravel had brought back uh, in certain ideas and instrumentations from his America trip that he had just before he wrote this uh, this uh, concerto, and uh, with uh, some. Uh, um, he, he wanted to play it himself, but Marguerite Long en ended up uh, playing it for him because he was uh, just so tired of uh, all his very active life uh, that he had uh, at, the, at the time, uh, in the late 20s. And um, how, what do you know about these? <laughs> well, yes, I know that Marguerite Long played a very, very important role in Abbe's life, and she was, of course, you know, sort of a um, pope-like figure <laughs> also in, in you know, French musical education and, and the sort of embodiment of the French school with all of its limitations in a way as well. Um, but, you know, I have to say I never heard the playing, but of everything we know about the playing was that it was extremely clear, extremely precise, and, um, and of course this must have suited the piece very, very well in the beginning. You know, so it's a very difficult one actually. I've been, I've been working with this for, for years now, and it's one of the more um, how, how say, um, it's hard to be satisfied with the piece. Somehow it always leaves you wanting more or needing more and, and always this fine line between, you know, the sort of mechanical aspect of, of the music, you know, this almost, we were talking about that yesterday, it's almost sometimes Petrushka, uh, like articulation, ta 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 so something which is very sort of disincarnate and at the same time you always feel with Ravel, this is of course what I love about the, this, this composer, this, this, uh, always this tension, this harmonic tension, this rhythmic tension, something which is always sort of unresolved and, um, and the conflict is can be very sort of tiring to handle, actually. <laughs> um, so, so you can, you know, you always have this choice. I suppose you could say that of any piece. But with Havel, it's, it's it makes it even harder to decide whether you have a, a more first degree approach or or second degree approach. And I find myself constantly sort of oscillating, if not vacillating, between the two, and that can be can be difficult. You did play this concerto with our orchestra, um, some. 10, 12 years ago, together with Claudio Abado. Uh, now this time, with, together with Tugan Sokiev, the orchestra has been uh, changing a lot in this time, in these years. Uh, probably last time you played, you, there was a lot of the Karian era still present. Now there's a lot of the Rattle era present. How would you qualify this uh, evolution or change? Well, the, the playing is still outstanding, no question about it. But of course, you feel you feel in the in the in the vitality. Not that vitality is necessarily associated with youth. I mean, that's another myth. But I do think that um, yeah, you, 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 there's something that is more um, perhaps more open. Um, that's the that's the first impression. Although when I was whenever it was, it, it was a long time ago, maybe ten years when we did this piece. Um, I remember it was the first season of Guy. I remember you weren't playing because you were on, on break for solo <laughs> uh, playing and um, so and I remember already with Guy things seemed already different from what I had experienced with Claudio the first time. So it's, uh, but it seems as if the identity of the orchestra is not, not changing and actually for the, for the better. You know? So hopefully people, I mean there is probably more, more strong individualities, more idiosyncrasies within the orchestras and perhaps they're just more, uh, how say, al allowed to emerge than they were at one time.